In this world, the truth and lies can be told apart, despite the fact that nowadays, as it may seem, as it may seem, lies may look as if they are indistinguishable from the truth. It is true that with sufficient uh, social programming and karmic programming, lies can actually become the real truth. But the point is, humanity are far more than just data centers, just, um, you know, an empty hard drive where you stock uh, all your ideas that you want. Because that's technically what social engineering is. And, well, manipulation is a way of social engineering. Because you want to test the waters and see how compliant people can become. When it comes to what the truth and what a lie technically is, well, the truth is distinguishable from the lie because the truth will always be one. If there is a certain situation, the truth will always be one. There can obviously be several slight interpretations because the truth ultimately is beyond the mind. So there are many situations in which you either cannot explain it or you don't need to explain it. Because when it comes, for example, to spiritual truths, you cannot explain things to people who are not, well, you cannot say spiritual, but you can say spiritually inclined. Because spirituality is an ongoing process. Ever since you are born, there is something going on within you, or, well, technically a plethora of things going on within you, beyond the physicality and the senses of this physical body with which people kind of over-identify with. So the truth is just there. The truth is just like the sun. It's somewhere in the middle and things usually whirl around those. It's not gonna leave, it's not gonna change its place. Lies are always needed to be many because usually one lie needs to be supported by other lies. And this is basically easy to see. You just have to look at who you are and how you function, right? Because when you lie someone, or when you lie to yourself that your situation is good, you, you need to create even further lies to support that. That's why in older videos I used to present this as the mental pantheon, right? When you want to create a lie, you must, uh, you must believe it. And believing means accepting something without a necessity for proof. So when you believe a, a lie, when you simply embrace the lie, the point is it's like embracing a god, a deity. So technically you are turning your mind into a plethora of deities that you are simply somewhat worshipping because when you support an idea that much, that it's almost survival based, well, it's like that idea is far more important than you. And according to one's well-being and spiritual development, the only thing superior or better than who you are is something or someone who is higher or, well, better in skills than you, right? Who appears as a symbol for you, as something to guide yourself uh, by. Someone who is, for example, uh, wiser in a certain field, or wiser in general, someone who is better skilled at something, becomes an emblem, right? Becomes a symbol for you because you want to adjust always, you want to adjust to something better. But in society and conditioning and, you know, become poor and stay poor because this way God will embrace you in their heavens, well, in such a society it might actually be hard to try this. But seeking the truth is something deeply encrypted in the DNA of people. Scientists may have actually tried to pinpoint that, but you simply cannot because it's not in the physical DNA, it's in subtler things which you cannot easily access because the universe has its own ways and there are no reasons for that. When it comes to the truth, the truth is like a chamber. It is like a chamber with as many candles as one may fit in there, but the chamber is simply dark. Because in the truth, there can be no interpretations. When it comes to light, right? Light is what I usually call the path of the weak, the path of the uh, coward. Because in the light, you can see, you can use your senses. But that's not actually one point. In the light, you can actually boast with all the fake things that you have. 
just like people you know do on social media many people boast with fake lives but finally speaking if you put them in the darkness of what they are they will simply crumble because when you are in the darkness no one can actually see right you can put all your trophies in in a room right and boast with those when people pass by and you know even on the street you can do that and boast with your so-called achievements even if those trophies were bought from one source or another but you can do the same thing in a room where it's you know pitch blackness and no one will simply notice that because well in the blackness you can't see because there is no light there is nothing just like reality technically most of the things is the only reality is that you are seeing images you are hearing sounds you are perceiving things through your senses and the meaning is attributed to those uh, feedback data right based on your own experiences and programming right because if you're not taught that you have four tastes you will still be able to distinguish between them because the body has developed through billions of years on this planet right through different shapes sizes right the previous animals and they don't have any meaning right towards their um, senses they don't classify their senses in anything but they naturally know and distinguish them because that's how things simply flow in this universe so when it comes to the to a lie a lie always requires um, investment it requires heavy effort because it is like keeping a ball under a uh, you know underwater if you take a ball and you keep it underwater in your bathtub for example the or in i don't know some shallow water it takes a while right because you will spend some of your energy always right each second and sooner or later you will become tired just like this society has become tired in its sickness how why well because every lie has an expiry date and keeping the ball under water well you can't keep the truth well in this case one can say submerged because the truth always pops out the truth is that the ball will simply float on water or on most liquids if not all liquids if those liquids don't have movement right because if movement and currents occur flotability may be you know absent so when it comes to keeping the ball underwater sooner or later you will simply uh, get tired the point is if you want to keep the ball very much under water you have to actually keep your face close to the water surface or sufficiently closer and if you drop the ball it will simply pop out of the water and most likely smack you in the face when it comes to the truth it may be a room of thousands of uh, or as many candles as you can fit in but that's just like a society in which everyone is complacent but the problem is in order to light that room you only need at least one candle it takes one candle to light the room right because if you have one lit candle the others can simply lit themselves from that the problem with suppressing the truth is that when you suppress the truth you actually do the opposite effect because you're doing the same foolish thing with your children you're telling them don't do this don't do that but you're not telling them that thing the way you want them right the way you should because when you prohibit someone from doing something you will always uh, propel them towards doing that now science call this reverse psychology it is in a way a it is a way to describe it but ultimately it is nothing else than fact checking and at the same time it is a internal propellant everything that has to be experienced must be experienced because life does not have to be prohibited don't forget that there have been people who have committed different things that may be interpreted as horrible like hurting themselves for scientific purposes or doing certain things like this but ultimately it has all been for the full purpose of experiencing life it is in a way similar 
to video games because in video games your character can die as many times it doesn't hurt you physically it doesn't hurt you emotionally so that is why you don't care but in real life when people die because of different things it is you know much more heartbreaking because you know technically it's someone physical who is dying but at the same time it's just a physical body that has been shed and life goes on life goes on and it will experience other things in case it didn't break its karmic cycles by simply inhabiting a new body if that body also breaks well the physical life form will have its own karma that it has to pay for so if we are to look back in our lifetimes we have all been murderers dictators or whatever we have all done our shares you know of bad deeds and good deeds in a way but that is not necessarily important. The truth is always going to be there. Lies are also going to be there because everyone finds comfort in what they see fit. Because ultimately, they both are one way or another a so-called reality. What you believe in becomes your reality. Never forget that. Because something that becomes more important than you is technically your reality. It doesn't matter what you believe in. That is technically your truth or basically your reality. But that is the perceived reality. Your true reality is technically everything that you have experienced. All your emotions are valid. What you have experienced, pain, pleasure or whatever, is your reality. And it applies to literally all the cases. Because to, to a murderer that takes great pleasure in killing someone, that is their reality. You cannot change that. That is one point. You can jail them, you can send them to death. If death is not applied to them, they will live, right? As long as they live, that is technically their reality. People have to accept things like this instead of labeling everything they don't like as monstrous or, you know, annoying or whatever. Because fussing for little things is just a simple lie. You're using that as victimization. And victimization is basically a lie because you are calling yourself powerless just to call for people's attention. And you are not powerless. You are always powerless if you seek loneliness because this is the easiest way to rule people. When people are feeling pissed, they want to simply separate from the others. And separation means weakness, right? You can build as, as big and tough walls as you want, but any fortress, it doesn't matter how big it is, easily becomes a prison when surrounded by many enemies, right? Never forget wise quotes by a king. You do not build walls to protect you from the others. You build walls so that you can live in a way well, but your diplomacy skill is what simply will dictate whether those walls are going to protect you from, you know, any possible outside harm or them turning into an actual prison. Because when you're surrounded by allies, those walls will protect you from anything other than your allies that may come, right? Because in medieval times, there could always be, you know, other invasions, right, from the outside. When you're surrounded by enemies, well, the problem is that, hey, that easily becomes your prison. And that prison can easily become your tomb. Because once you're surrounded and you're attacked, it's kind of hard to escape from there. All this being said, you are appreciated. Take care. Ferenc Board signing out.